Whether you're a content creator who publishes on YouTube or a business who publishes across multiple platforms, including YouTube, YouTube Analytics is extremely helpful in determining your content strategy. In this video, I'll share exactly how I use data from my YouTube Analytics to get inspired about new content, how I plan my content calendar, and also figure out my content strategy in order to reach a larger audience and grow my brand. So if you're on YouTube already or considering to start on YouTube, this video will teach you how to make the most out of your YouTube Analytics in terms of determining your content strategy. But hey, if we're just meeting, my name is Elif and I'm a marketing strategist, educator and content creator and I make weekly videos for this channel around the topics of digital marketing and marketing career. So if you're new to the channel, you might consider subscribing for more videos like this one. All right, without further ado, I'll just get started with the seven points that I have listed for today's video and for some of them, I'll be doing screen sharing so I can take you through my analytics and show you what I mean exactly, what I'm referring to. For some of them, I won't need a screen recording so it will just be me here talking to you. So the number one thing I want you to look at is your audience data. You need to know your audience like the palm of your hand. You need to know the geographies they're from. You need to know their age groups. You need to know how they behave when they land on your channel, how they behave when they're viewing your content. You need to understand when they are active on the platform, what languages do they speak? Do they prefer to turn on the subtitles or not? All of that information you need to understand so well that you can prepare your content with that in mind. So the way you can take a look at the audience data in YouTube Analytics is once you are in the YouTube studio, you click on Analytics and the fourth tab that you'll see at the top is audience. So I want you to click on that and I want you to play around with different time frames by clicking this area. Let's actually do 90 days so that we get a larger time frame to analyze. And these are giving you the main statistics about the, the viewers, the number of viewers, unique viewers and average views per viewer, which could be an important metric that you wanna follow. But at the moment, that's not our main concern. So our main concern is to understand what are the peak times for activity on the platform for our uh, audience? What are some recommendations if you're using a tool like TubeBuddy? This is the TubeBuddy logo. So these are some recommendations from TubeBuddy in terms of publishing hours per day and this actually tells me something because right now as of uh, last week my publishing times are 11 a.m. Thursdays and this tells me 9 a.m. could be better so perhaps I should listen to the data and make some changes for myself so this tells you uh, what your top geographies are the subtitle preferences and also the language preferences obviously the age and gender which I really prioritize and it's really important because that's how I determine what type of content I need to create because that tells me uh, what could be the goals of my audience when I look at their age groups. So for me, 18 to 24 tells me, and this is the majority of my audience, 18 to 24 tells me that majority of my audience are most likely students. That's also the same uh, data that I get when I engage with them, when I talk with them through comments or emails or DMs whatever it may be. So I know that the majority of my audience is either marketing students or students that are uh, interested in exploring marketing as a field, or they are uh, professionals in the earlier years of their career. They have not really advanced that much. So they're most likely not seniors um, in the marketing uh, industry and in the marketing profession. So this tells me a lot in terms of where they are in their careers or in the their education uh, and their professional background and uh, timeline. And that's how I can determine what type of content could be more relevant for them. So I'm not gonna dwell too much on uh, how I exactly uh, do that for my content, but I wanted to show you where you can find this information. And also, if you want to dive a little bit deeper into this, uh, maybe you wanna do this per video or per playlist that you may have. If I click on see more here in the main um, line graph here, it takes me to my general analytics uh, detail dashboard, right? So, and if I wanted to only concentrate on geography, viewer age, viewer gender, and all of that, so more information about my audience, then I can look at that in more detail. And I can look at different geographies just on its own. I mean, this again tells me a lot in terms of where my audience is from, and it also tells me about their priorities and maybe 
maybe uh, how I should kind of take a position when I'm talking about, for example, job applications or how to create a resume and stuff like that because it might be different for Turkey and the United States. I'm just making up. But yeah, so this is how you find more details about your audience. You can also do this per video as well. So let me also show you that view before skipping to the number two recommendation that I have for you. So let's go into this video. We're now looking at one specific video. I wanted to analyze what exactly uh, my audience looks like for this specific type of content, then I can do that when I'm in this type of um, view. So as you see for this one, by 69% majority, like the, a big majority of the audience that's watching this video is between ages 18 to 24. And therefore the balance between the 25 to 34 and 18 to 24, that was kind of this overall demographic for my uh, channel is not the same for this video specifically. So that's again, a different type of uh, insight that I can take from analyzing this. The second recommendation I have for you is to look at your comments and not just to look at your comments. I'm going to combine this with the third point that I have, or the third recommendation that I have, and that is to engage with your audience. One of my main priorities for my channel, for my content strategy is to always find time and reply to every single one of your comments. And that is so, so important for me because that's how I get to know you. And that's also what of the ways that I was able to build established relationships with you and long-term relationships, which is more important than uh, increasing my view count per month, but then kind of losing uh, that connection, if that makes sense. So the second recommendation I have is to really be careful and really pay a lot of attention to your comments. So how you do that, again, within the YouTube studio, if you click on comments, you're able to filter your comments in many different ways, and some are really helpful helpful in terms of figuring out what other topics your audience is interested in learning or what type of questions have aroused from watching a certain video. I wanted to show you is the different filters that uh, you can filter by and the default option that I normally have is showing comments that I have not replied to so that I make sure that I always reply to your comments. But um, if you are looking for content inspiration, if you're kind of stuck with new content ideas or if you want to simply create content that's really, really targeted for your audience and that's really going to be helpful for your audience, then a great tactic that you can apply is to filter your comments by clicking this one, which is that contain a question. So this is basically very simply telling you that these are the things that your audience is asking additionally to what they have already watched from your content. My internet is a little bit slow, but it is loading. It's searching for the comments and it's going to display maximum of 500 comments with questions. And you'll see that I have actually responded to probably most of them. And whenever I see a comment with a question that feels like it needs needs to be answered for a broader audience, then those are the questions that I take note of in my content planner. So I want to maybe show you this one as an example. So she's asking, is Notion comparable to Milanote? And it was not a tool that I was familiar with. So I did a little research and I found that it's not similar to Notion at all, but it felt like it's a little bit similar to real time board, which was a tool that I use in the past. So that's what I told her, but this got me inspired in making another video where I made Maybe compare Notion and talk more about its features and how I use Notion and what it is helpful for. So this is another one that I wanted to show you. Maniha is saying that she or he likes the YouTube Analytics series and asking if I could compare playback based CPM and RPM. So this is another great question that I took note of. Maybe it doesn't have to be a video necessarily, but it could also be a LinkedIn post. It could be a tweet or it could also be a topic that I expand on and create a post in my Facebook group. This is a great strategy that you can do. Uh, some people had questions about how to apply for Marketplace Apprenticeship on Acadium and so many more. So this, I mean, there is thousands of comments like this one that I take note of. And this I use to overall get inspired about new content.
content, uh, identify what are the things that my audience is asking the most frequently. Either I can create YouTube videos around those topics or either I can expand around those on different platforms, maybe on my website, maybe that brings an idea about a digital product that I could work on or something to add in my online course that I'm working on. This is a great way to get inspired about new content. The next one that I want to talk about and that's super important, that's really connected to number two, uh, looking at your comments is to engage with your audience, to listen to them, to ask further questions. And this does not only have to happen within YouTube comments or within YouTube analytics. You can also do this via emails uh, or Instagram DMs or LinkedIn messages or whichever platform you are the most active on. But make sure that you are really taking advantage of that engagement feature, uh, that opportunity to connect with your audience on all of your content creation platforms. One of the things that I really like to do is that whenever I send an email newsletter, I always ask for people's feedback. Obviously, I don't receive an answer from everyone whom I've sent the email to, but those who reply to me, they really care. Genuinely, they care about giving me that feedback and idea about what else they would like to see or if they have more questions. If everything's going well for them, that's also a great signal for me because that tells me I'm on the right track. So I always encourage people to give me feedback and ask me more questions. And I highly suggest that you do the same as well because it's going to not only help you build relationships and create better connections with your audience, which is going to give you ideas on how to design your content strategy. Next suggestion I have for you is to analyze the YouTube search keywords that are bringing people to your channel, the way people discover your channel, uh, through which keywords are they coming to you. So once again, we're on the analytics page uh, in YouTube studio. And this time I want you to click on reach the second tab uh, at the top menu. And I want you to scroll down. Number one, maybe look at how much uh, of your audience is coming from YouTube search. So this is 51.6% uh, for me, which is really important. In a previous video about YouTube analytics, I mentioned that uh, ranking in a YouTube search is really important for me. That's a major part of my strategy. But anyway, that's not the point. So I just want you to maybe take a look at the percentage of people coming in from YouTube search because that tells you how relevant the keywords are. And then scroll down to traffic source and YouTube search. And if you click on see more, you're going to see all the keywords that are bringing viewers to your content. For these keywords, your videos, your content is ranking on the platform. And what you can take away from these keywords is that if you haven't already covered one of these keywords, or maybe you haven't covered a keyword in the way that people are asking or people are searching for it, then that's a signal again, that you can use those keywords in your content. Or if it's a question that you haven't covered yet, you can again, create new content around those keywords to answer those questions. So for example, uh, this tells me the marketing job one, I don't actually have a video that uses the keywords marketing job. So maybe this is something that I should take note of and do. Or another one is the digital marketing certification one, for example. And this one I am able to pick out right through because I've been asked so many times in comments or emails about digital marketing certifications. And I do already have a few videos around digital marketing certification, but maybe this tells me that I need to dig deeper into this topic and create several more videos or several more blog posts that could relate or link to this keyword bucket. Another one that I'm going to randomly select from this list of keywords is this one, because it's a question that I've been receiving for quite a while. It's one of the FAQs for sure. Is a marketing degree, is it worth it? So maybe this is a question that I should answer. I have a couple of videos where I talk about uh, how to get a job in marketing without experience, or if you need a degree to get a job in marketing, but I haven't covered it in this way, uh, kind of focusing on whether or not it's worth it. This gives me again, this perspective, this uh, different idea and scope about how I can kind of create new content or maybe use new keywords. And maybe I've already covered these keywords on YouTube, but I haven't covered them on different platforms. And I know that my audience is interested in these keywords. This is how 
they're finding me. So how about I go ahead and create a blog post if I don't already have one on my website. So this is really going to feed uh, your overall content strategy and not necessarily only your video strategy, if that makes sense. Moving to the final two, and these are going to be kind of obvious, but I want you to analyze your most popular videos by views and by engagement. So how do we do this in YouTube analytics? Once again, we're back to the overview page on YouTube analytics. If you want to uh, analyze by video, what I want you to do is uh, just scroll down a little bit and click see more. And once you have this view in front of you, again, select your relevant time frame. Maybe let's do 90 days again, because I feel that gives us more space to kind of analyze our content. Then scroll down once again. The default view for me at the moment, it may be different for you, but you can sort this out by views, is look at your most popular video over the course of 90 days, for example, and kind of look at your most popular ones. Maybe try to identify if they are similar. Maybe you are creating content around the same keywords, or maybe they are not the same keywords, but it's kind of the same topic. Uh, they're all answering questions that a student might ask. I'm just making this up, by the way. But kind of analyze why those specific videos could be the most popular ones. And also after looking at the views list, I want you to pay attention to the view duration too, because that is also another very important metric that YouTube algorithm pays attention to. And that should also tell you that your audience is more engaged. They're investing more time of their day uh, to watch that piece of content. Look at the average percentage viewed and also view duration too, because you know, if you know the duration of that video, uh, then it's going to kind of give you until which point they watched your video, but maybe look at the percentage viewed even more and look at the average of your channel and kind of benchmark individual videos by using the average of your channel. So this one, for example, maybe is not at the top of the views list, but it's quite good in terms of the average percentage viewed. Uh, career paths in marketing as well. It's quite good in that sense. So this is another way to analyze the views and engagement of your videos to identify what are the most popular uh, content pieces that you created so far and maybe you can create a spin-off of that or maybe you should go and look once again at all of the comments that have been written under that video so that you uh, can figure out what other content people want to see around that same topic so that is again going to give you a lot of ideas around how you can make new content how you can plan out your content strategy and again as I mentioned in the previous note if you have that content maybe on YouTube already, but you don't have it in other platforms and you're using, you're creating content on LinkedIn and website and all of that, maybe cover those topics once again in those platforms. So again, feeding the overall content strategy for your business or your personal brand. The final thing I want you to do is to look at your most controversial videos. I actually just thought of how to do this. So again, when you are in this view of looking looking at your videos as a big list, I want you to open this and add metric to table. And I want you to look at likes versus dislikes. We'll also add a second metric that is going to tell us, uh, once again, the most controversial ones in the sense that we've lost subscribers because people did not like it. Now that we've added these two new metrics to our table, we're able to kind of see the channel average. This is not the average. This is giving us a total, but we're just going to look at it in terms of the list and the likes versus dislikes channel average. And we can kind of benchmark that and see which videos have been really liked and which videos have been less liked by our audience, if um, that's a way to put it. I'm not going to do a deep analysis on this, but for me, I know that I lost a couple of subscribers this one right here and had a lower likes versus dislikes ratio compared to majority of my videos um, because it's about money. And I already know by looking at the comments under that video that that was a controversial one because 
because I realized that a lot of people did not find what they expected in terms of hearing a salary range, hearing a certain specific number um, uh, for the salary uh, in terms of how much a digital marketer will earn. Anyway, so the, the point is not that video specifically, but I just want to show you or let you know that I've already analyzed that that video is one of the controversial topics for my channel or for my audience. If I want to maybe make a spin-off of that video or cover that topic, the salary topic in a different way, then I can do that. That actually gave me an idea to do an interview with a marketing recruiter about uh, marketing salaries. So I hope the overall idea is making sense in terms of how you see um, which content has not resonated with your audience, which content has been more controversial, which ones um, made them uh, ask more questions and all of that. And this eventually is going to help you come up with many more ideas and come up with uh, how you can repurpose your content for different platforms overall. All right, so those were the seven recommendations that I wanted to share with you in terms of how to use YouTube analytics, how to take data from your YouTube analytics to determine your content strategy, to determine how you plan out your content across different channels, as well as YouTube, obviously. But the information, the insights that you can draw from YouTube analytics does not only feed your YouTube video strategy, but your overall content strategy, which I find really helpful. Hopefully this video was also helpful and valuable for you. If it was, please don't forget to let me know by hitting the like button to let me know that you like this video and so that this video can reach a larger audience and with that we can also tell the YouTube algorithm that this video is a good one and other people will also find value in it so that's that thanks so much for watching being here I appreciate you so much and I will see you in the next video take care guys bye bye